Well, hi friends and welcome to Did You Art, the YouTube channel for people who don't take themselves or their art too seriously. So I thought this would be a fun opportunity for me to do another quick little art journal page tutorial. This should take you roughly under 20 minutes to do. And my inspiration for this page was, well, really a couple things. First of all, it's summer and I'm totally down with eating lots of juicy, delicious fruit. Things like peaches, apricots, watermelon, honeydew, which we call honey don't because we're weird. Um, just lots of juicy, fresh fruit. Also, another source of inspiration for this page was my garden or I don't even know if you can really call it a garden, to be honest. That's why I have this I didn't kill my plant sticker on my journal. So this is year two of trying to grow my own fruits and vegetables. So far we've had a lot of luck with cherry tomatoes, with, um, no, the corn's not doing well. What else have we had luck with? Is that it? All right, so we, we're killing it with the cherry tomatoes, but everything else is kind of, <laughs> oh, pumpkins. We're doing okay with pumpkins. Anyway, um, I'm kind of learning as I go as far as what it takes to be a gardener or to have a green thumb, which I do not have a green thumb. If anything, it's like, I don't know, a brown thumb. Is that gross? Anyway, it's not green. What I did, I did something wrong. I did something bad. I forgot to harvest my zucchini. Then my neighbor called and said, did you know you have a giant zucchini plant growing under our fence? Sure enough, I went outside. I grow planets. This is not a zucchini, this is a planet. So apparently this isn't what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to let them get this big. I didn't know that. I was actually really excited when I saw this because I thought, sweet. I can grow huge zucchinis and enter them into the state fair or something and win awards. But every time I went and I showed my neighbors this, they were kind of like dancing around telling me the truth. They were like, oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's really cool. And then I Googled it and I found out that when fruits and veggies get this big, specifically zucchinis, they lose their flavor. They're hard to cut into, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so that brings me to today's journal page such a reach but you know it makes sense in my mind next year i want to draw or not draw i want to draw them too but i want to grow watermelon if i can grow huge enormous zucchinis i should be able to grow huge enormous watermelon which is one of my favorite things so i thought let's go ahead and paint a watermelon slice today pretty easy pretty fun and after we're done with this journal page i'm gonna go eat some watermelon Okay, so I just flipped my journal open. You know, I don't go from the front to the back. I just like to open it up and whatever page I land on, that's what page I'm doing. So I wanna do a watermelon slice sitting on some kind of surface, like a counter. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of lay out my page. I think I'm gonna have the counter be like right around here. It's kind of going on an angle, let's flatten that out. And I'm gonna have it kind of resting on the side here. So what I'm gonna do is just like a little curved line like that. It's gonna be a big slice. Like that. And we're just gonna pull it up. Pull that line up. And bring it together like a little triangle. And it's okay if it's not perfect. When I cut into watermelon, I never really know how to do it properly. So my watermelon slices never look like this. They don't even look like slices. They look like chunks of blocks or something bizarre. Okay, so we wanna have this watermelon slice be dimensional. So I'm gonna kind of bring this line out a bit and this line at the top out a bit. Now, I want it to be straighter. Right now it's going on an angle. I'll just use this eraser. It's not the best eraser, but it sure is convenient. Um, yeah, let's go, can you see that? Straight across, like that. Drop this line down, make it as straight to this line as possible, as even. Sure, perfect. Now you can make your watermelon as thick or as thin as you want. This is a good, good size for me. And I'm gonna go through and erase 
the surface lines, the countertop lines that are showing. No, I need a bigger eraser for this. Uh, 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 where is it? I just kind of organized my art studio. Now I can't find anything. There it is. And get rid of that line. By the way, did you know that there's a company out there that sells dried watermelon seeds that you can eat? They kind of look like pumpkin seeds, but they're actual watermelon seeds. And I have tried them and they are very delicious. Okay, so now let's figure out where we want the flesh of the watermelon to start, obviously, up here and end. Now, I'm going to have the rind be here and bring that around like so, but I don't want it to be perfect. I want kind of that organic feel to the watermelon because it's never really a perfect straight line, is it? When you have it go from pink to white to green. So uh, let's see, let's, gonna ha let's have the rind show a little bit more on this side. Actually, no, you know what, let's do this. I think watermelon so it's going to be white, pink, white, green. So this is going to be like that. I'm going to have more of the rind show on this side just because it's kind of on an angle to give it some depth. And then I'm just going to bring this line around all the way to this side. Perfect. And this line is kind of bugging me. It seems like there's a bubble in the watermelon. So yeah, I did it again. It's okay. Like that. Slightly erase these. Yeah, now let's figure out if we want our watermelon to be seedless or if we want seeds. I personally like the seeds, not to eat, but just because I think they're pretty and they give this watermelon some interest. So just drop them wherever you feel like you want seeds. And it doesn't have to be perfect, like these two are close together. Maybe there's a seed there. Let's put another seed right over here. Eh. You know what, that's a little too much for me. It's a little too many seeds. So we're gonna delete those. Delete. Can you tell I've been working on a computer too much this week? The other day I was looking through an art book and I found myself going like this to try and blow up the picture on the page. That's pretty pathetic. Let's just do one big one there, kind of a weird shape. Okay, so what I wanna do is my background first. And I think I wanna try a new technique today. I brought this up. This is sea salt. Now with watercolor and uh, doing backgrounds, you can create really cool textural effects by sprinkling salt into the water and just letting it kind of bloom to dissolve and do its thing. All the books that I've seen say you should just use regular table salt. I don't have table salt. I have this pink Himalayan sea salt that um, was actually gifted to me for Christmas, so thank you, whoever gave that to me. Let's try this and see if it has the same effect. I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't see why it wouldn't work. So let's pull out my Jane Davenport go-to watercolor palette. Let's also find a brush because that's kind of important too. You'd think that maybe I would plan ahead for this since I'm filming and have my brush ready to go. Let's do the new one. I got this new camel hair, um, what is this called? I don't know, it's just like a big fat wash brush. Who knows? Oh uh, yeah, let's do that, okay. So because the watermelon flesh is gonna be a really pretty pink color, I thought it would be nice to uh, have a nice contrasting blue background. Just getting a little bit of water here. Okay. And you know me, I love my messy, sloppy, textural backgrounds, so I am just going crazy with the water. I'm gonna drop some pigment in. I might do two colors, oops. Maybe some blues, different tones of blues. Okay, let's put some, put some color in there. I want more pigment, I've decided. Stop it, stop splattering. I'm really into tie-dye lately. 
I don't know if that's because like the whole 90s trends are coming back in, which is crazy to me. I grew up in the 90s and I just cannot even believe half the stuff I wore is in again. But I've noticed tie-dye. Tie-dye shirts, tie-dye shorts, tie-dye peasant tops. And I'm not gonna lie, kind of into it, kind of into it. Um, all right, so I'm thinking right now, I want my light source to be over here going this way. So this is gonna be in light, this is gonna be in shadow. So maybe I'm gonna add some more pigment on this side and maybe let's do a different shade of blue. Ooh, just to give it some dimension. Let's add a little more. I love this watercolor palette. This is always my go-to, no matter what I do. I know what the colors are gonna look like. I know they're gonna be energetic, saturated, and just really nice. I'm gonna drop some of this blue in here too. I know, I use way too much water. I can't help it. It's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna mop up some of this stuff down here on the end, just a little bit. Just Pat it up like that, maybe a little over here. And I honestly love the texture. Look at that, that the toilet paper gives the background. But let's play with the sea salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle it in a couple different areas. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Maybe a little more down here. Okay. Let's see what that does. So while that's drying, let's start down here with the surface. Now, I think I want it to be, I wanna keep it relatively white, just because there's so much color on this page. I'd like to have a nice white area to kind of break things up a bit. So what I'm gonna do is make the shadow gray. Whoops, that's wet. Let's do a nice gray black color. Uh, not in there. I think it's in this one. Yes. All right. Let's try this. Get it nice and wet. I always get scared when I use a super dark color or dark shade like this. Okay. And again, your light source can be anywhere you want it to be. I just, I don't know. I always have my light source off to the left for some reason. Um... Over here, stop splattering. Bring it all the way under like that. This is totally not the right brush to be using either. You know what, no, let's do this. Let's switch over to a 12. And I'm gonna add a little darker, yeah, it's a little too dark, that's okay. there to it. Just add that there. Give it some shadow. Too much water. Gotta work on that. Gotta work on that. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring this out just a bit too to show that this is actually not sitting on the surface. That it's in the air. I'm gonna wash this out just a little bit. Oddly enough, I've never had a dog hair land in my watercolor pages, which is bizarre because I pull dog hairs out of everything. Every single body surface, area, crack hole you can think of, we've pulled dog hair out of. Food, pillows, sheets, blankets, but never Never mind watercolor, knock on wood. I'm gonna do just a little bit more over here. And I always try to remember that this does typically dry lighter than when I first drop it onto the page. So this could lighten up a bit. If it doesn't, that's okay. I like it. All right, I'm gonna call that good. How's this doing? How's this doing? It's still drying a bit. I don't wanna go in and do the pink yet because 
I've learned the hard way that if you have a background that is a completely different color than your foreground, if you if it bleeds at all, you're just screwed. Like it just looks ridiculous. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, let this dry and come back. Okay, so I sped things up a bit and I used my heat gun just to get this process moving. And while it was drying, I was just looking at this. I'm gonna go back over the surface with another lighter wash just so we can get this edge. Right now, it's too messy for me, believe it or not, even though I love my messes. So we'll go back over in a little bit and um, fill this part in, but still keep it relatively white. Just something to give this edge an edge. Okay, what's that? Get out of here. Okay, let's go ahead and paint this part. I'm gonna pull out this palette again and using my, let's do the number eight brush, I'm gonna mix this hot, hot pink. It's like my most used color. I go to it all the time. Hot pink with this almost magenta. There's a little blue in there, but that's okay. Okay, that's too purple. Now we're gonna play around. I'm gonna add some yellow, see what that does. That makes it more of a watermelon. Yeah, getting there. Look at that mess. It's too orange. My apologies to the real watercolorists out there that actually know how to mix color. I am not at that level. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm, I'm gonna add a little more pink to it, I think. Just a little bit, zhuzh it up. Okay, this is gonna be, this'll be fun. Let's just do it. I've seen dark colored watermelons before. So you'll see with this line here, I'm not gonna take the paint all the way across. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white line just to break things up. So it'll show that there is actually an edge there. Need more water. Stop that, bring this down. Again, you don't have to have a straight line at the bottom. This is a pretty color. I like it. Don't watermelons change color like this when they're overly ripe or like they're about to be thrown out? <laughs> like they're to the point where you can't eat them. I don't know, but I like it. So maybe if you are more interested in having your watercolor look ripe and juicy, you can spend more time mixing colors, but I'm just having fun. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever the outcome is, is what the outcome is gonna be. I'm leaving those there. Leave those uh, seed spots open, cause we'll go back in with black in a little bit. Um, let's see, what do I wanna do? I'm gonna add more pigment on this side because that's the light source is over here and this is gonna be in shadow. I'm gonna just do that, see what happens. Still getting used to these brushes. I mentioned in another video that I've, uh, I've typically used the brushes where you fill the, the tubes, like the bodies of them, and the brush is not the best quality. I think it's synthetic hair. Um, and uh, these brushes, they hold a lot more water and I'm just not used to that. So that's why I have a tendency to overdo it with the washes. Okay, let's do this side now. Take this line up up don't connect them these lines here leave it separate go around the little seeds i'm gonna clean that line up a bit don't worry don't panic it's organic <laughs> oh i've been itching to use that line in a video i don't know if it worked if it was relevant to this but 
that's okay. All right, so this is looking good, but we're not there yet. I'm gonna add a little more pigment down here, maybe over in this corner too. Don't bubble up on me there. And what I think I'm gonna do is pull out some of the, uh, the um, I can't think, the toilet paper and dab this just a bit, not nothing crazy, but I just kind of want some, uh, some white in there to break it up just a bit. Nothing, nothing crazy. Like that. And you always want to kind of flip this over. Don't be lazy like me and just keep blotting and blotting because you will get this color into your background. Just make sure you're kind of flipping it over a bit. Okay, um, let's do another little wash over it just to soften that line up. Okay. Oops. Totally didn't mix that, but it didn't mix it properly, but that's pretty. Kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. Let's call that part good. And now let's do the rind. Now my rind is going to be a beautiful shade of green. This is almost there, almost to the shade I want it. Just go like this. Ooh, there's some green there. Let's pick that up. Aha, that worked out. That worked out. Just a little darker. Um, okay. And then let's just go sweep our brush across the bottom here. Like that. I'm gonna go back over this and add more pigment, but I just wanna get an idea of what that color looks like. Okay. Make it a little blotchy, because there is a pattern, I believe light pattern on a watercolor, watercolor, watermelon rinds. Wow. I think that uh, my brain would be working on a Sunday afternoon since I've been relaxed all day, but apparently it's not. I'm just gonna add some of this green to break it up a bit. So pretty, this green. Yeah, I hope that dries nice and vibrant like it looks now. Cool. Yeah, let's let that dry and go back in and fill in our seeds. Cool, it looks good. Let's go ahead and do the seeds. So I'm gonna swap out my palettes here. That's my black. Where's my little brush? my little brush. Uh, is this little enough? Is this clean? Margo, come on. Okay, that is clean. No, I want a smaller brush. Okay, yeah, this is one of those brushes I was telling you about that have the, um, the water in the handle and the brush part, not the brush part, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so this is what I've typically been using. This is my thinnest, finest brush that I have. So we're just gonna do this. Go in and make these pretty little seeds. I like to leave white in them just a bit. It gives it kind of a shine to it. Oops. There, this one I'm gonna fill in like that. I hardly have any water on this at all. Add a little more, a little more down here. It's 
weird. I hear music outside, like there's a concert. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Pretty music. It's like a jazz band. All right, let's keep it like that. Now, what do I wanna do? I know I'm gonna go over this with Micron and I might actually use the Micron to give the rind some texture. Let's do, oh, that's pretty, whoops. Um, let's do the background here, let's do this wash. Let's do that. Very light, a very, very light, light wash. I don't even know if I'm gonna put pigment on it, to be honest. I might just use this dirty water. Is that bad? Let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the dirty water. That's gonna pull that green out of it. There. It's so light, you can't really even tell, but just like it. Just so there's something. It's not quite as dramatic of a shadow. Blends in a little blends in a little nicer. Just a little nicer. That's really pretty music, whoever's playing that. That should be an ongoing thing. Okay, yeah, I like that. Let's let this dry. This shouldn't take too long, I don't think, to dry. And then I'm gonna go back over it with my fabulous Micron pens, yay. Okie dokie, where are my Micron pens? Okay, so let's do scribble lines. I like to call them scribble lines with, let's do a three, an O3. One of these I beat up pretty badly, so I'm hoping this is not the one that it still works. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and just do some scribbly lines. Oh yeah, this is a little rough. It's okay. Get some lines. Okay, and then I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna get a little scribbly, more scribbly, scribblier, whatever the correct terminology is, down here, just because I want it to show that it's resting on the table. A bit, bring it up, nothing too crazy. And then continue this line to there. Bring the scribble line down here. Isn't it fun to do scribble lines? It just takes the pressure off having to be perfect. Why would you want to be perfect, right? Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to put a dark line in there, maybe just a little over here, since this is the shadow area, and then just light, lightly over there. Just let it end, okay? And then, don't even really know if this is necessary since these are black. But scribble those in. Also, I need to get the sea salt out of here. Didn't really do the effect that I thought it was gonna do, and I don't know if that's because I didn't add enough water, because I did blot it up, so maybe I, that was my mistake. I shouldn't have blotted it up. But um, it's still pretty. It's still different. It gives it some interest in the background there. I don't know, if you guys have used the salt technique before, did you use sea salt? Did you use regular salt, table salt? And if so, did you notice a difference? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, let's see, do I wanna do anything else as far as lines go? Maybe just make that a little darker in there, a little scribblier, more scribbly. Yeah, bring that out just a bit. And I think I'm gonna leave it, she said as she kept drawing. Yeah, I like that. 
And I like how this color turned out. I wasn't sure, to be honest, as I was doing this. I thought, oh no, this is gonna be a flop video. But I do like it. It's almost a coral red, but it's different. I think it, it pairs nicely with the way that this um, blue background dried. It's a nice compliment, so pretty happy with it. It's a win. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I appreciate the support. And I invite you to join our private Facebook group. Um, I'll post the link down below. And in that group, go ahead, join, introduce yourself, and start sharing some photos of your artwork. I'd love to get to know you, and I'd love to see what you are creating. Until next time, thanks for watching, and take it easy.